Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. Today I will talk a little bit about some dangers of shared flow because I see a lot of people use shared flow in all of their projects and I've done the same in the past but you really have to understand shared flow and what it does and why it does things the way it does to be able to use it for the right kind of purposes. Now, on the other hand I will talk about channels which are very similar to shared flows and why these are actually oftentimes a better alternative. So let's just dive into Android Studio and take a look here what I have prepared. On the one hand, we have a shared flow here in a view model and we have a channel which we then convert or receive as a flow, nothing special. And yeah, then we just launch a coroutine for, yeah, very often we actually repeat this block and just send an event into the shared flow and also into this channel here. So far, so good. So both of these kind of structures are used to send one-time events into these. And a one-time event could, for example, be showing a snack bar, showing a toast, just uh, notifying the UI that the user is now connected, that the user is disconnected to navigate away or so. So something you usually don't model as state. That would be an event if you don't model it as a state. Because if you do that, then you would rather use a shared flow or just compose state or whatever. And let's talk about the major difference here between shared flow and channels, because that's really what it comes down to in most of the cases and why a lot of people misuse shared flows. And that is that shared flows are hot flows. That means that if you send an event into the shared flow, as we do here, for example, if we call emit and there are no observers, so there is nobody listening to these events, they will still get sent into the shared flow and they basi they're basically gone because nobody listens to these. And this is not a bug or so, that is just how shared flow is built. So it's intentionally built like that. And why can this be a problem? Well, the problem here can be uh, that events get lost if there are no observers. Well, you might wonder now, okay, if I actually go to main activity and I have some code here, let's say lifecycle scope dot launch. And here it's actually recommended to use this repeat on lifecycle, which I can also talk about in a moment. Um, we want to repeat this on lifecycle state started. And in here we can simply listen to these events of the shared flow. So we can call collect and we get the number or whatever, and we can print it or so, collect it number from a shared flow. So you might do this in your project and then you you might think, okay, there is actually always this collector for the shared flow, so events shouldn't actually get lost. However, that is not fully right. Events can get lost here in this specific scenario. Because what happens here is, let's say you have a screen rotation and during a screen rotation, as most will know, the activity is recreated, so the lifecycle will go towards the on-destroy state. What this repeat on lifecycle function here does is, it will simply repeat or basically cancel this coroutine and relaunch it as soon as the lifecycle is in, an on, in the on-stop state. So then it will be cancelled and it will be relaunched when it is in the started state. And that is important here. It gets cancelled when the lifecycle is in on-stop, not when it is in on-destroy. So what it, that means is, if the viewer model sends an event when the lifecycle is currently after on stop and before on destroy, then there are no observers because this block got cancelled. So if there was an event like showing a snack bar or so coming from the view model in that unlucky window, basically, then that would be lost and the snack bar wouldn't be shown after the screen rotation. And on the other hand, if we use a channel, this one here, which we then receive as a flow, so that's just a normal flow, which is by, by nature a code flow, which is kind of, yeah, the, the opposite of the hot flow, obviously. A code flow does not emit events when there are no, uh, no observers. So if we have the same code here just to collect our flow, which comes from the channel, from channel, then the difference here will be that this will really collect all values. It is important here also for channels that if if you send events into this that you actually use the um, 
immediate main dispatcher, which is the default dispatcher already for view model scopes. But if for some reason you send something into your channel from somewhere else where that's not the default dispatcher, you have to make sure you use that. So you would need to do dispatchers main dot immediate. But that is the default for view model scope. So if you just say view model scope dot launch, it will use that dispatcher, which is just the UI dispatcher. It's important that you use that if you collect these events on the UI, since otherwise events still can get lost. And the way I want to demonstrate to you how that now works, I actually create a little service here, which does nothing else than just having a thread and a while true loop. And here I will launch the service. So just to make sure that the app keeps running in the background, here we can launch the service. Um, my service also starts service and we pass the intent. So we just launched the service when we also launched the activity. We should then see our log statements here from the shared flow. We should see them from the channel. And then let's see what happens if the app actually goes in the background. So I will launch my device here. We will take a look here in Logcat. And yeah. That was actually already correct. Let's search for collected. The app is installing. Okay, and you can see every second, both our shared flow and our channel are actually collecting these values, which is perfectly fine. However, if I now go in the background with this app, you see suddenly both actually stop to emit values. And that happens, of course, because the activity went into the on stop state. So that the curtain scope, uh, the repeat on lifecycle scopes here were actually cancelled and they will be relaunched as soon as the activity comes back to the unstarted state. And if we now take a look in Logcat and I do open the activity again, which I now did, you can see what happens here. I will stop this app. Here it happened. So it stopped at collecting 13 from the channel and it went on with collecting 14 from the channel, 15 and so on. However, it stopped with collecting the 12 from the shared flow and it went on from collecting the 44. So all events between 12 and 44 from the shared flow are lost because there were no observers and these events were still sent into the shared flow. And as I said, this is just something that can also happen during a configuration change, which is of course harder to simulate than just to demonstrate this with a service example here, because it is something that would very, very rarely happen because yeah, it's just not a lot of time between on stop and on destroy, but it is something that can happen. And now you might wonder why do we actually have shared flow if it seems to be so bad? Let me tell you, it is not bad. It's just not the right thing for every use case. And especially for typical Android use cases, like showing a snack bar or so, people like to use it for that, um, but I wouldn't. To be fair, till now, I haven't talked about the advantage of shared flow over a channel yet, which I will of course do. And that is that a shared flow, well, the name already suggests it, it is shared. It can have multiple observers while a channel can't have that. So for example, if you have some kind of session management class or so that would send connection events, disconnection events, maybe if another user joined or so, um, and you need to observe these events in multiple different places in your app and not just in a single place in your UI, then a shared flow makes sense because that that would need multiple observers. However, if you're just using a view model and you're sending events to the UI and there is only one observer on your screen, then I would always use a channel and receive that as a flow just like we did here. So all in all, a little summary, a shared flow can drop events for example, during a, sc a screen rotation or when your app goes into the background while a channel with a channel that does not happen, a channel will actually kind of cache all these events that are sent into it. And then when uh, the subscriber uh, reappears, it will send these to the subscriber. I hope that clarified a lot of doubts whether to use Shardflow or channel and which situations that make sense. If you want to learn more about flows in general, which is quite an important topic for Kotlin and Android, then watch this playlist.